so as not to be nervous, they say, imagine the audience in the underwear. <laughs> Just turn around and look at the middle. Seriously, turn, turn around, look at the middle shelf. I've got nudes to take my mind off. Of. <laughs> So, my name is Jeffrey Cottis. I work with Energy Division. I'm not Jim Crone. Jim couldn't be here today. But what I want to do, um, as, as uh, George has, has um, introduced, there's a whole lot that we can talk about today. But what I want to do is talk about two things. I want to talk about use, and I want to talk about the systems that give us the energy that we use. Most of what I'm going to say is available here in our uh, clean energy strategy. And there's extra copies by the cookies if you want to consume both calories. Um, what I want to do first is go on to use. Um, energy use in Manitoba is pretty much divided into thirds between three different systems. We have transportation, heat, and electricity. But even though you have um, roughly uh, a pretty good even split between the three, the characteristics of each of those sectors are quite different. The transportation sector, for instance, is very reliant on imported energy. Whereas electricity, I believe 99% or more, is all local content. So when we look at the way we use energy, it has um, not only impacts in the actual tactile interaction that you and I have with energy, but it actually has uh, bigger implications in terms of what it means for a broader society. What is not in that table is the energy that we don't use. Energy efficiency that we can either use to offset future generation demands, or uh, that we can turn into financial revenues in terms of exports. But how we use energy is uh, reciprocally related to the systems of energy that is delivered. So what I want to do for the remainder, um, I just have three uh, slides uh, that I want to talk about each of the systems. Electricity in Manitoba, I believe, is in excess of 98% clean renewable hydropower with uh, a, a touch of wind power. This is uh, significant local content. It is essentially around um, 6,000 megawatts, just, just shy of 6,000 megawatts of capacity. And that's, that's a fair bit. I mean, if you compare it to Quebec, for example, Quebec has roughly 36,000 megawatts of capacity. So we're sitting at one-sixth. And it might not be as big, but in that, uh, if you look at that little blue uh, footprint with Manitoba on top in the northern states, that's what we call the Midwest Independent uh, Systems Operators Region. It's basically the electricity market. And we are the largest generator within that market. So anything that we sell, that we don't use, that we can sell, uh, can go down into that market and provides two fairly significant benefits. The first is, of course, uh, import uh, revenues from the export of the electricity. And that comes back to Manitoba. But what we're giving away is that environmental attribute to regions and states that would normally be relying on natural gas or coal or nuclear power. So there's a reciprocal relationship. Yes, we give benefits, and yes, we give benefits, but it's part of that open market, that, uh, that excess energy that is generated that is very difficult to store once it's been generated can be, can be uh, distributed to uh, with benefits to all. Um, our wind generation, as a, as a sort of a comparison, provides enough power to, um, to, to, to provide the power to 90,000 homes. So that's just two, uh, two generating stations or two wind farms with, I think it's 246, yeah, there we go. Thank you, 258 uh, turbines. So the, um, sorry, what? That's capacity. Yeah, 133, sorry. Uh, 133 turbines. So the idea there is that it's just, it's diversifying our electricity uh, system, and um, but this itself is is a system. You can look at that map just onto your left. Uh, there's 15 generating stations for hydro dams. There's uh, two generating stations for thermal units, and those all are integrated and used in uh, Manitoba, with the exception of some uh, to the uh, some sales to the open market in the south, some firm power contracts, and some small amounts, both east and west. In terms of the heat system, 
Um, the over 55% or so of our heating needs are provided by natural gas. If you look at that red arrow, that is all coming from Alberta. Approximately 2 billion cubic meters of natural gas is imported into Manitoba. That serves about 270,000 customers in 100 communities across the south of Manitoba. And that is a key point because all natural gas is in the south of the province. If you're north, if you're off grid, off the natural gas grid, uh, like myself, I'm in, in, on a farm and I only have electric power, so I have an electric furnace. And um, so that accounts for that 34% of electricity that we use for heating, which is a fairly um, expensive way to heat your house. There are other alternatives, and other alternatives that, uh, that can be done in a more independent way, and perhaps in a, in a greener way. Uh, if you look at biomass energy, uh, wood furnaces, agricultural crop residues turned into uh, um, pellets. Um, you can use geothermal and solar power as forms of green heat uh, that can also heat and cool by leveraging the ambient temperature in the ground or in the air around you. And those different alternatives, although there's this massive system of natural gas distribution and electricity in, in, in Manitoba, we also have these other systems that we can use that uh, complement the very stable systems that exist, and in some cases have existed for over 100 years. The third uh, and final system that I want to talk about today is our transportation system. There are two components, I guess, that we need to be mindful of. There's the heavy-duty freight, the semi-trucks and the railways, and there's the personal light-duty uh, cars and trucks. In terms of uh, heavy-duty freight, we're in the middle of the continent. We're at the hub of a corridor that goes east-west, north-south, and there is a lot of heavy uh, industry, or, I mean, heavy uh, freight that is moving a lot of commodities through our jurisdiction. If you can see it, and I don't know if it shows up very well, there's a small little circle around Winnipeg that basically looks at the southern portion of the province. In that region is most of the uh, light duty vehicle use. <clears throat> there are roughly, I think, uh, 750,000 uh, light duty vehicles registered in Manitoba. They use 100 and the pardon, 1.3 billion liters of, of gasoline. If you combine all the diesel customers, it's 1.1 billion liters of diesel, costing over two billion dollars um, that is exported for or spent for imported fuels. That's money exiting the province. And if you add on the extra cost that we spend on importing natural gas, it's almost three million three billion dollars that's leaving the economy every year. However, transportation is unique. We don't have it. We don't, uh, the transportation fuels, we don't have. We don't refine uh, oil here. We don't produce uh, petroleum products like gasoline and diesel. So we um, have a lot of cars, but we don't have a lot of the fuel. So we can take small steps to adjust our response to that system. And one thing we've done is looked at biofuels. And there are positives and negatives for that, but what has happened is that the uh, biofuels mandates, which is 8.5% for ethanol and gasoline and 2% of biodiesel and diesel fuel, has reduced that $2 billion exodus of Manitoba money by $100 million. It's reduced greenhouse gases by almost 400,000 tons, which is about the equivalent of 80,000 vehicles off the road every year. So when you look at transportation um, and the biofuels element, there is something called a blend wall where we're pushing up to the maximum. It's very difficult to leverage more than that. But what else can we do? Well, we have electricity and we have electric vehicles. And it's an early technology. It's in its early stages. But if you think of the benefits that electric vehicles or electrification of transportation can offer, you're looking at uh, significantly reduced operating costs in terms of fuel the kilowatt hour equivalent of gasoline price is about 12 cents to fill you, uh, 12 cents a liter to fill your electric vehicle where it's a buck five to fill your car. That's a significantly reduced price. Some operating, uh, some purchase costs are up front, but again, we're in early technology. Um, it almost, it, ver it eliminates, almost virtually eliminates greenhouse gas emissions. So electric vehicles, there's no combustion 
some types of electricity, uh, electric vehicles have some onboard combustion as well, so that changes the dynamic a little bit. And finally, um, the uh, potential of electric vehicles is that it brings local content into an uh, uh, energy system that is heavily reliant on imported fuels. So if we can use Manitoba electricity to power our cars rather than import it from somewhere else, it just seems like a good, a good idea. There are technical challenges, and those, you know, like in all new, new, uh, new innovations, new niches, they have to be worked out. So those are the three systems, and that's how we use them. I just want to just finish, I guess, by talking about this reciprocal relationship between use and the systems that provide us the energy. As I mentioned before, some of those systems are over 100 years old, and they're stable, and they're, they work and they get us what we need when we need it. Every generation, our wants change, our needs change, our expectations change, our perceptions change. So as energy becomes different for us, we still have the systems that were built by our grandfathers. And that carries through a persistence that we need to reconcile. So we can't change things overnight, guaranteed. But we can try to incorporate things such as environmental concerns social concerns, technological concerns, and the way we use our energy. So in understanding energy in Manitoba, the one message that I would like to share is that it is a reciprocal relationship, not only between uh, the way you use your energy, but the way the energy uses you. Thank you very much.